To get to the truth about these prophecies of Daniel in chapter 2, we must pray to God that He will guide us and lead us. We must compare scripture with scripture and compare it with what has happened in world history. So let's begin with these amazing prophecies of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2, we find King Nebuchadnezzar having a dream which went from his mind and this dream troubled him. So he summoned all the great magicians of the kingdom to tell him what the dream was and what it meant. Daniel 2 verse 2 says, Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. The only problem was the king couldn't remember this dream. He was troubled by it, but he couldn't remember the contents of it. How many times do you wake up from a dream and it's gone from you in a moment? It certainly happens to me. Now these magicians and sorcerers got their powers from Satan. But do you know what Satan cannot do? He cannot read minds. He has limited power on this earth. And so the stage was set for God to receive glory by revealing the dream to Daniel. So King Nebuchadnezzar issued a decree to slay all the magicians and sorcerers because they could not make known to him his dream. Daniel 2 verse 12 says, For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel and his friends were to be killed along with the wise men. So Daniel goes before the king and asks for time to interpret his dream. So Daniel was granted time to do this. And he went home to tell his three friends about it. And together they prayed to God for mercy to reveal this secret dream so that they would not be slain. Daniel chapter 2 verse 18 says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. <clears throat> the God did something which a lot of the Christian world today do not put faith in he revealed the secret dream daniel 2 19 and 22 then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision then daniel blessed the god of heaven he revealed the deep and secret things there are so many christians today who don't study bible prophecy because they think it is too complicated well how about taking a leaf out of daniel's book and coming before god in prayer and trusting in him to reveal the truth about Bible prophecy to you. So what was the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed? The book of Daniel chapter 2 verses 31 through 35 says, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron and clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors, and that... The wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So we have this great image of a man whose head was gold, breast and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet of part iron and part clay. So, what does this image and its different parts represent? The book of Daniel chapter 2 and verses 38 through 40 says, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all things, shall it break in pieces and bruise. 
So the different parts of this great statue represent kingdoms of this world. We know where to start because Daniel confirms that King Nebuchadnezzar and his kingdom of Babylon was this head of gold. So can we tell from history who the other kingdoms were? Of course, the head of gold which was the Babylon Empire ruled from 605 to 539 BC. Since the head is definitely pinpointed as Babylon, all we have to do in order to find out what this next kingdom was is to look at history to see which kingdom arose after Babylon. According to world history, the dual kingdom of Medo-Persia followed Babylon, conquering it in 539 BC. It is even specifically named later on in Daniel chapter 5 verses 30-31. And that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. This being the kingdom that conquered Babylon. Also the prophet Jeremiah about 56 years earlier in 593 BC had prophesied that the Medes would conquer Babylon. The dual kingdom of Medo-Persia is depicted here by two arms. The Medes and Persians were very clear with their hands and handicrafts and with building. The chest of silver, which was the Medo-Persian Empire, ruled from 539 to 311 BC. We know from history that this third kingdom of brass, the one to follow Persia, was the Grecian Empire. In a later chapter, Daniel specifically prophesies that Greece will be the conqueror of Medo-Persia. Daniel chapter 8 verse 7 says, And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with choler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. And verses 20-21. through 21, The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Medo, Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. The thighs of bronze, which was the empire of Greece, ruled from 311 to 168 BC. Since we already have the fulfillment of actual history, we know that this fourth kingdom was Rome. Rome was the tough, iron-fisted kingdom which clamped down with iron military rule over the entire known world in the days before Christ. It so subdued all things that for nearly a hundred years there were no major wars, no one even being able to muster a force against the Roman rule. Rome is symbolized here by two legs of iron. Was Rome ever divided into two parts? Yes. In its decline it was divided into an eastern and western empire. The western empire had its capital at Rome and the eastern empire called the Byzantine Empire had its capital at Constantinople, Italy the heart of the Roman Empire. It's even shaped like a leg. Rome was the strongest of all these kingdoms. That's why it is symbolized here by iron. And why was Rome not only the strongest like iron, but also like a pair of legs? Because they were great on marching. They were the first world empire to build a lot of paved roads. They built big stone highways everywhere. And the main purpose of their paved roads was so their Roman legions could march rapidly to conquer any country that would rebel or cause them any trouble. What's the longest part of the image? The legs. And of all those empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, which of those empires ruled the longest? Rome. They ruled for 644 years. The legs of iron, which was the Roman Empire, ruled from 168 BC to 476 AD. After Rome fell in 476 AD, the world divided into different kingdoms up until the end of Rome. There was always one main ruling world power, such as Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. But after Rome fell, this ended and the world split into divided kingdoms. This is represented in this great image by the feet of part iron and part clay. So this image of the great statue is a view of the whole of world history, showing the ruling kingdoms of the earth. And we are living in the time of the feet of this image. Now notice what happens after the time of these divided kingdoms. Daniel chapter 2 verses 34 and 35 says, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, and silver, and the gold broken 
to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The stone that smote the image is Jesus, and this great mountain that filled the whole earth is none other than the millennial kingdom of God. The stone smashes the image by force and destroys it and leaves nothing of it. It says the wind carried away man's governments as chaff. That stone or rock is none other than Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Friends, we are living in the very end times, and the next kingdom that will conquer this earth is Christ's kingdom when he returns at the second coming. Many people, including Christians, are waiting for a one world government to be set up that will rule the earth. Yes, there is no doubt that the powers of this earth are trying to set up a one world government that will totally rule the world and they will succeed to a certain extent to be able to enforce the mark of the beast. But the world will never become united under a single world nation again like in the past under Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. You see, God revealed to Daniel that Rome would be the last single one world ruling kingdom. After Rome, on this great image, we have the feet of iron and clay. Now what did Daniel say about the feet? The book of Daniel chapter 2 and verses 42-43 through 43 says, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. After Rome fell, it split into the kingdoms of Europe. Now we know that people in the past have tried to unite Europe into one nation to rule the world. And they will continue to try like the European Union and United Nations are doing today. But as we can see from the prophecy of Daniel 2 above, they shall not cleave one to another and shall not succeed. The leaders of this world can try all they like to form a one world uniting ruling nation. But if God has shown through Bible prophecy that it cannot happen again, then it won't. Don't get me wrong, the nations of this world will come together in agreement for a short time to force the laws of the beast upon the world. As it says in Revelation 17, 12-13, that the ten kings shall give their power to the beast and reign with the beast for one hour. You will see in Revelation 13 that one of the end time beast powers calls the earth to receive the mark of the beast and any who refuse will be killed. So we will have two earthly powers, so to speak, in the last days. The sea beast of Revelation 13 that gets its power from the ten kings and the earth beast of Revelation 13, which is America. But notice that Daniel says this final earthly power will be partly strong from the iron of Rome and it will also be weak from the clay and it won't be able to cleave together properly. Therefore, this agreement between the kingdoms will only last a short time. The only completely united single ruling kingdom that is coming is the kingdom of God, which will smash the kingdoms of this earth to pieces and will reign forevermore. Praise God! Keep in mind that the power of Rome, the iron and the feet would continue to end. Jesus is coming soon, brothers and sisters. This is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries, and always remember, the truth is the truth. God bless you all.